I'm starting a series of videos about basics of broadcast, and I'll break it down into different videos, content acquisition, content transport, content delivery, and content consumption. Each video will cover the basic concepts of that topic. But first, I want to thank today's sponsors, LinkUp Communications and Broadcast Depot. Content acquisition is the gathering of content from numerous sources. You have microphones, automation computers, phones, and codecs. Each of those sources creates sound. They provide the content that will eventually reach the end user or listener for radio. This would be the music that's played or the hosts that are talking. This typically is the flashy part of the radio station where you see the behind the scenes views of the talent talking to the guest. And if you look up old radio DJ pictures, you'll probably find ones that show them in the studio in front of the console spinning records with rotary pots. We'll cover that in content acquisition, but as I said, this is the flashiest part of the radio station because it's where people usually visit and work, and a lot of effort is spent on making studios look pretty amazing. And I have several tours of studios on this channel that show that point. Now, if you're planning on building a studio or you're in the process of building one, Broadcast Depot can help. Broadcast Depot ensures seamless broadcast equipment operation with comprehensive solutions. From evaluation and installation to ongoing support, they are dedicated to your success. Their training programs simplify equipment understanding, allowing you to focus on content. They partner with reputable manufacturers. Broadcast Depot delivers reliable, expert service that stands the test of time. So visit their website if you're needing to get some things at 7BD.com or call them at 305-599-3100 or just click the link in the description below. Content transport is getting that content from where you're gathering it, usually a studio, and then moving it to a transmitter site. This is typically called the Studio to Transmitter Link, or STL. It could be a traditional RF transmitter site or a server that's providing content to listeners over the internet. Technology is available to make it very reliable to get the audio to the other end. A long time ago, it used to be equalized phone lines that went from basically point to point, the studio to the transmitter site. Then analog microwave links came around and allowed stations to have their own links to the transmitter sites, not going through the phone company. Those microwave links have grown up and are now microwave links that carry IP data, allowing you to get audio to the transmitter site and then get telemetry back to the studio so you can watch over things. But there's other options as well. You have satellite links or even the internet like I mentioned, that technology is available now and it is really reliable. So, something to think about. But we'll cover that in that video topic. Content delivery is how the content is getting to the end user. This is your traditional RF transmitter site or servers for podcast or streaming. This is generally one of the places where broadcast engineers spend a lot of time. And it's not because they're trying to hide out. Okay, maybe sometimes. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into maintaining a transmitter site. You have filters, usually. So many times, uh, transmitter sites are on the tops of mountains in the west or at the base of really tall towers in the Midwest and the east. And there's a lot of dust and dirt and they have to clean filters. They have to make sure the facility is kept clean so that way you don't have any arcs or things we'll cover when we get to this topic and we'll talk about it more. But anyways, this, in my opinion, is where the magic of radio happens. And now today, so with streaming and podcasting, those are gaining traction and they're creating a different style 
of magic. But there's more to content delivery than just sending it to a transmitter site or a server farm. Let's say you have a radio show that other radio stations want to carry. Well, how do you get it to them? Well, that's where our other sponsor for today's video comes into play, LinkUp Communications. You send them your show in real time. They can effortlessly distribute it to other stations that want to take your show using their industry standard XDS platform. LinkUp has well over 100 years worth of experience in broadcast and content distribution. There's no challenge too big for them. And I can say that because that's my day job and I'm not just, you know, patting myself on the back. No, we've really pulled off some amazing things for our customers. So if you're interested in getting your content distributed, visit their website at linkupcommunications.com or click the link in the description below. Finally, last part here, content consumption is how that audio is received or video or content or whatever it is, how that is received by the end user, the listener, the viewer, the reader, whatever it is. A long time ago, it was the giant radio sets in the living room that everyone gathered around, you know, like in, um, oh, what was that movie? Uh, Christmas Story. Remember, he's sitting there waiting for Little Orphan Annie. That's where we kind of started from. And as technology progressed, that radio moved into the car, especially in places like Los Angeles, where the main mode of transportation is the personal car. And that's where radio has ruled for the last several decades, if not more. But that reign is starting to be threatened with the introduction of podcasts and streaming. The phone is quickly becoming the main method of content consumption. As we progress through this series of videos, we'll dive deeper into each section and talk more about the details. But in the meantime, take a tour of a radio station or maybe a transmitter site. And until then, I'll see you in the next part of this series.